Hey there, guitar lovers. Welcome back to the channel. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. Today, we're diving into the world of one of the greatest guitarists and songwriters of all time, the one and only David Gilmore. David John Gilmore, born March 6th in 1946, is an English guitarist, singer, songwriter, who is a member of the band Pink Floyd. He joined as guitarist and co-lead vocalist in 1967, shortly before the departure of founding member Sid Barrett. Gilmore's parents encouraged him to pursue his interest in music, and in 1954, he bought his first single, Bill Haley's Rock Around the Clock. He borrowed a guitar from a neighbor and never gave it back. Soon afterward, Gilmore started teaching himself to play using a book by Pete Seeger. At age 11, Gilmore began attending Purse School on Hills Road, Cambridge. There he met the future Pink Floyd members, Sid Barrett and Roger Waters. In 1962, Gilmore began studying modern languages in college. Barrett was also a student at the college, and he spent his lunchtimes practicing guitar with Gilmore. In late 1962, Gilmore joined the blues rock band Joker's Wild, the band recorded a one-sided album and a single, but only 50 copies of each were made. For Gilmore's 21st birthday in March of 1967, his parents gave him his first Fender guitar, a white Telecaster with a white pickguard and a rosewood fretboard. Gilmore traveled to France in mid-1967 with Rick Wills and Willie Wilson, formerly of Joker's Wild. The trio performed under the name Flowers, then Bullet, but were not successful. After hearing their covers of chart hits, club owners were reluctant to pay them, and soon after their arrival in Paris, thieves stole their equipment. In 1967, Pink Floyd, composed of Barrett, Waters, Nick Mason, and Richard Wright, released their debut album, The Piper at the Gates of Dawn. That May, Gilmore briefly returned to London in search of new equipment, during his stay, he watched Pink Floyd record See Emily Play and was shocked to find that Barrett, who was beginning to suffer mental health problems, did not seem to recognize him. In December of 1967, Mason invited him to join Pink Floyd to cover for the increasingly erratic Barrett. Gilmore accepted. They initially intended to continue with Barrett as a non-performing songwriter. By March of 1968, Working with Burt had become too difficult, and he agreed to leave the band. After the success of Dark Side of the Moon in 1973 and Wish You Were Here in 1975, Waters took greater control of Pink Floyd, writing and singing lead on most tracks. By late 1970s, Gilmore had begun to think that his musical talents were being underused by Pink Floyd. In 1978, he channeled his ideas into his first solo album. David Gilmore, which showcased his guitar playing and songwriting. Music written during the finishing stages of the album, but too late to be used, was incorporated into the song by Waters, which became comfortably numb on the album The Wall. The relationship between Gilmore and Waters deteriorated further during the making of the film The Wall and the album The Final Cut in 1983. The negative atmosphere led Gilmore to produce his second solo album, About Face, in 1984. He used it to express his feelings about a range of topics, from his relationship with Waters to the murder of John Lennon. Gilmore toured Europe and the U.S. When he returned from touring, Gilmore played guitar with a range of artists and produced The Dream Academy, including their U.S. Top Ten hit, Life in a Northern Town, in 1986. In 1985, Gilmore played on Brian Ferry's solo album, Boys and Girls, as well as the song, Is Your Love Strong Enough, for the Ridley Scott, Tom Cruise film, Legend. In July of that year, Gilmore played with Ferry at the Live Aid concert at Wembley Stadium in London. In 1985, Waters declared that Pink Floyd was a spent force creatively and attempted to dissolve the band. However, Gilmore and Mason announced that they Intended to continue without him, Waters resigned in 1987, leaving Gilmore as the band leader. Gilmore produced the Pink Floyd studio album, A Momentary Lapse of Reason, in 1987. 
He felt Pink Floyd had become too driven by lyrics under Waters' leadership and attempted to restore the balance of music and lyrics. Pink Floyd released their second album under Gilmore's leadership, The Division Bell, in 1994. From his iconic guitar solos that send shivers down your spine to soul-touching melodies that have stood the test of time, David Gilmore's musical journey is nothing short of awe-inspiring. But what's the secret behind Gilmore's mesmerizing sound? How does he manage to touch our souls with every note? Well, it's a combination of unparalleled skill, emotional connection to his music, and his unique use of effects. His emotive playing, which values precision over speed. Gilmore's lead guitar style is characterized by blues-influenced phrasing, expressive note bends, and sustain. In a 1985 interview, he said, I can't play like Eddie Van Halen. I wish I could. Sometimes I think I should work at the guitar more. I play every day, but I don't consciously practice scales or anything in particular. In 2006, Gilmore said, My fingers make a distinctive sound. They aren't very fast, but I think I am instantly recognizable. Pick out his guitar work on the Berlin song, Pink and Velvet, from 1986. As a member of Pink Floyd, he was inducted into the U.S. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1996 and the U.K. Music Hall of Fame in 2005. In 2003, Gilmore was made a Commander of the Order of the British Empire. Rolling Stone ranked him number 14 in their list of the greatest guitarist of all time. He was also voted number 36 in the greatest voices in rock by Planet Rock listeners in 2009. In December 1999, Gilmore played guitar alongside Mick Green, Ian Pace, Pete Wingfield, and Chris Hall for Paul McCartney at a concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. This resulted in the concert film Live at the Cavern Club. On July 2nd, 2005, Pink Floyd reunited with Waters to perform at Live 8. Gilmore donated his profits to charities that reflect the goals of the Live 8 saying though the main objective has been to raise consciousness and put pressure on the G8 leaders, I will not profit from the concert. After the concert, Pink Floyd turned down an offer to tour the U.S. for $150 million. On March 6, 2006, Gilmore's 60th birthday, he released his third solo album, On an Island. It debuted at number one on the U.K. album charts and earned Gilmore his first U.S. top ten as a solo artist reaching number six on the Billboard 200. On July 11, 2010, Gilmore performed for the charity Hoping Foundation with Waters in Oxfordshire, England. And according to onlookers, it seemed like Gilmore and Waters had ended their long-running feud, laughing and joking together along with their respective partners. In October 2010, Gilmore released an album with the electronic duo The Orb, called Metallic Spheres. Gilmore performed Comfortably Numb with Waters on May 12, 2011 at the O2 London. And with Nick Mason, they played with the rest of the band on Outside the Wall at the conclusion of the show. On November 7, 2014, Pink Floyd released The Endless River. Gilmore said it would be Pink Floyd's last studio album, saying... I think we have successfully commandeered the best of what there is. It's a shame, but this is the end. There was no supporting tour, as Gilmore felt it was impossible to tour without Richard Wright. In August 2015, Gilmore reiterated that Pink Floyd was done, and that to reunite without Wright would be wrong. In September 2015, he released his fourth solo studio album, Rattle That Lock. On November 14, 2015, Gilmore was the subject of a BBC Two documentary, David Gilmore, Wider Horizons, billed as an intimate portrait of one of the greatest guitarists and singers of all time, exploring his past and present. On September 13, 2017, Gilmore's live album and film Live at Pompeii, which documents the two shows he performed on July 7th and 8th in 2016 at the Amphitheater of Pompeii, were shown at selected cinemas. 
The album was released on September 29th, 2017 and reached number three on the UK album charts. In April 2020, Gilmore appeared in a series of live streams with his family, performing songs by Barrett and Leonard Cohen. On July 3rd, he released Yes, I Have Ghost, his first single since 2015, and features his daughter, Romani, making her recording debut on backing vocals and harp. In April of 2022, Gilmore and Mason reformed Pink Floyd to release the song Hey, hey, rise up in protest of the Russian-Ukrainian war. Pink Floyd have sold more than 250 million records worldwide, including 75 million in the United States. Gilmore is also credited for bringing the singer-songwriter Kate Bush to public attention, paying for the then 16-year-old's three-song demo. Gilmore arranged for EMI executive Terry Slater to hear the tape, who signed her. Gilmore credits guitarists such as Pete Seeger, Led Belly, Jeff Beck, Eric Clapton, Jimi Hendrix, Roy Buchanan, and Hank Marvin as influences. Gilmore said, I copied. Don't be afraid to copy. And eventually something that I suppose that I would call my own appeared. Gilmore also plays bass. Keyboards, banjo, lap steel, mandolin, harmonica, drums, and saxophone. Gilmore said that he played bass on some Pink Floyd tracks, such as the fretless bass on Hey You, as he could do it much more quickly than Waters. He said that Waters would thank him for winning him bass playing polls. In 2004, EMV Incorporated released the DG20 signature guitar pickup kit for the Fender Stratocaster. The set includes three active pickups, an EXG guitar expander for increased treble and bass frequencies, and an SPC presence control to enhance earthiness and mid-range. Gilmore has supported numerous charities including Oxfam, the European Union Mental Health and Illness Association, Greenpeace, Amnesty International, and PETA. In May of 2003, Gilmore sold his house in Little Venice and donated the proceeds worth $3.6 million to Crisis to help fund a housing project for the homeless. On June 20th, 2019, Gilmore auctioned 120 of his guitars for charity at Christie's in New York, including his Black Strat, his number 0001, an early 1954 Stratocasters, and his 1955 Les Paul. The Black Strat sold for $3,975,000, making it the most expensive guitar ever sold at auction. The auction raised $21,490,750 with the proceeds going to the charity Client Earth. David Gilmore's impact goes beyond the music, his philanthropic efforts, environmental activism, and collaborations with artists from all walks of life have left an indelible mark on the world. He's a true inspiration, proving that music has the power to heal, connect, and make a difference. Thanks for watching. Remember to hit that like button, subscribe, and share this video with fellow guitar lovers. Until next time, keep rocking.